I think we have to look at why it is that the government's looking to tax energy. And one is that in a populist sense, it, it sounds like, well, they're punishing the energy companies that are charging us for higher prices for gasoline and diesel and the like. Uh, and in fact, what they're doing is punishing the economy because these type of taxes don't work. We've tried them before. We've tried all kinds of windfall profits taxes in the past, and all they did is reduce supply and increase price. Now, we need a tax code that works. Our tax code now doesn't. Changing these type of provisions in a willy-nilly kind of haphazard way only makes that worse and makes the ability to achieve fundamental reform down the road harder. If you really want to change the code in a fundamental way and you want to get rid of uh, certain credits or deductions or whatever, uh, you have to look at the, the code as a whole and try to affect changes in the code um, that are more neutral in, in impact rather than one that picks winners and losers. This one was designed to pick winners and losers and was designed to raid a cache of funds that the government thought they could get their hands on so that they could defer it to the government's use and essentially uh, tries to punish people that um, the powers that be think uh, the American public wants to see. Uh, they don't understand in many cases the ramifications of these type of tax changes uh, and it will not be the positive uh, outcomes uh, that the administration and others that are discussing these will, um, uh, will uh, tout at this particular time increasing taxes on any aspect of the economy at this particular time will not be conducive uh, to getting those growth rates up and to creating more jobs. So a tax proposal that uh, will not lower gas prices or oil prices, will not see an increased supply, will not see increased investment, will not create jobs and will not promote economic growth is not the kind of tax increase we ought to be talking about at this time.